Of course you have a shit ton of LPS if you have autoimmunity. You cut the crap that doesn't work. Let's fix the environment. Hey everybody, I'm Maggie UMD. I am a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform Protocol to help turn around any autoimmune disease around naturally. And Kiran, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. So I'm Kiran Krishnan. I'm a research microbiologist with a heavy focus on the last uh, 10, 15 years in the, in the human microbiome and how the gut microbiome and other biomes, all the microbes in and around us, how they impact our overall health. And, and best of all, what are the healing opportunities within this uh, powerful ecosystem of microbes in order to improve outcomes? You know what I think is also missing from the conversation, Kiran, is digestion. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things in my experience, having dealt with my own autoimmune experience the last 20 years and helping people through it, is that I feel like digestion is like the missing holy grail in understanding infection. Yeah. If you have poor digestion, that's your first barrier of defense against infection. Yeah. And, you know, they there was a recent study that actually showed that people with autoimmune disease, 90% of them already have low stomach acid, which is only one step in digestion. And yes. if you think about just that stomach acid and what it does to kill microbes, we exactly. use vinegar yeah. to kill microbes. Yeah. And so if 90% of people with autoimmune disease already genetically have low, um, you know, stomach acid, then it goes to show that there's a reason why they're getting infected with all this bacteria at a higher rate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's two really important points to what you bring up there with the low stomach acid. So number one, low stomach acid allows for H. pylori to breed. Right. Mm -hmm. You can have higher levels of helicobacter pylori, which is a big source of this LPS and a big source of systemic inflammation. Low stomach acid facilitates that. The other thing that low stomach acid does is it allows more gram negative bacteria from the mouth, which is loaded yeah. with gram negative bacteria to survive through and colonize in your intestines, causing things like SIBO, for example. Yep. SIBO, the, a, a big source of the dysfunctional bacteria that over grows in your small bowel comes from your mouth because we swallow billions and billions of, of microbes every single day through saliva. Your stomach acid is supposed to kill all those microbes so that they're not viable when they enter your system. But if your stomach acid is low, and especially if on top of that, you've been using things like uh, proton pump inhibitors and, uh -huh. and all that, right? Don't get us started about that. How many people out there are on proton pump inhibitors or yep. phylosec right now? Common OTCs out there, right? Mm -hmm. It used to be a prescription, which is took a little bit more work to get, but now they're just over the counter. Anyone can go buy them. So we're actually, people have heartburn and they don't understand what's causing the heartburn, which is low stomach acid or infection or food sensitivities. And then they just put a bandaid on it, which shuts down your stomach acid, which makes you ripe for infection. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, one of the things you mentioned earlier when we first started was about the cycle of continuous infections, uh, because yeah. we keep trying to go after the, the, the core organism that may be causing the infection or driving the infectious process without really the thought around the environment and the yeah. terrain, right? Yeah. Um, nothing prevents an infectious bacteria from growing better than competitive commensal bacteria, yeah. right? They do a better job of controlling the bad guys uh, than we do targeting the bad guys. Because in all our efforts to target the bad guys, we are inevitably going to reduce the growth of the good commensal bacteria who we need to target the bad guys, right? So this becomes cyclical. And we see this with helicobacter pylori infections, uh, with, with continuous gut infections, even things like C. diff and other uh, mm -hmm. infections that we know of where we continue to use these, these agents to try to kill them and they just keep reoccurring because we're not really taking care of the environment, the terrain, uh, which we call our microbiome. A lot of people don't realize as you, are, you teach is that a lot of these gram negative organisms sitting in the stomach Mm -hmm. And small intestine is what's causing all these SIBO infections, uh, all the gas production, the discomfort, the, you know, symptoms. We mentioned that, you know, there's a digestion component of this. And then it's also bacteria sometimes in the wrong place. Like uh, point out one more thing. So when your gut is leaky and you're allowing lots of LPS to leak through, studies also show that bacterial, pathogenic bacteria can themselves leak through and yep. make their way into the mesenteric lymph nodes, which are attached to the digestive tract. And when they get into the mesenteric lymph node, they can trigger systemic lupus, 
that's actually one of the process in which uh, lupus starts to develop. And in fact, there was a big study uh, on cancer itself, looking at what is the biggest predictor of mortality and prognosis in cancer. Uh, and they found elevated LPS levels was the best predictor of whether or not you're going to develop mortality and what your prognosis was in cancer. 60% uh, at least of cancer mortality has to do with LPS and the resulting inflammation and cachexia that it causes in mm -hmm. the body. That's that wasting syndrome, right? So uh, absolutely, you know, and, and um, if you think, if you look at the work that Fasano, uh, Dr. Fasano has done at, at Harvard, they always talk about, you know, the triangle or the triad of autoimmune disease. One of the things, you know, that, that they always talk about is some sort of environmental trigger. And LPS and leakiness in the gut is known to be one of those environmental triggers that can start the cascade and start the process off in the body. And so for me, the big takeaway, what is the big takeaway? And I think is what Kiran just said, which is that, of course, you have a shit ton of LPS if you have autoimmunity, you yeah. know, like, and so much time, money is wasted on further diagnostics to figure out if I have elevated LV APS, do I have infection or not? When I'm like, cut the crap, it doesn't work. Let's fix the environment, which is what the five pillars of transform is about. And so people said, does your five pillars address LPS, the role of LPS in autoimmune disease? 100% yes. And to learn what the five pillars are, type five pillars in chat right now, and we will have our team get the five pillars training to you. If you wanted to learn more about the Transform program, there is a link in chat for you to book a chat with our team.